Hey everybody, wanted to talk to you today about sensitive information types and how they fit into the Microsoft Information Protection stack. Sensitive info types are a cornerstone of how Microsoft has designed their data protection technology. And if you understand how sensitive information types work, the good, the bad, the ugly, it's gonna really help you when you're building your DLP program to eliminate false positives hit on when you're expecting your DLP policies to hit, and then obviously design additional data types, right? Custom data pieces that are really more important to you as an organization. So uh, let's go through it and let's, let's look at what sensitive information types are and then how we can build them in our environment and how we can modify them. All right. So I really like this slide from Microsoft because it really puts into perspective both the architecture of how Microsoft has designed all of their information protection technology, as well as the importance of where sensitive information types fit in and why it's so important to have this key component working so well. So here you can see the core of everything is the MIP stack right, the classification service that Microsoft has. And that's gonna trigger all of our other protection technology that we have. Uh, specifically, obviously, we're talking about DLP uh, in our last video, but as we expand out and include other types of protection technology, whether it be endpoint DLP, scanning on-premise file shares, or scanning third-party cloud, all of that's gonna be tied back into the classification service that we have with Microsoft. And what is the classification service built on? It's built on sensitive info types. So out of box, Microsoft has built a lot of definitions of sensitive info, right? And so that's gonna be things like credit card, social security numbers, driver's licenses, um, a whole myriad of options are in here. And there's a lot of different regional specific items like uh, New Zealand passport numbers, things of that nature. So if we get this information type correct and we understand it thoroughly, we're going to be in a much better spot to figure out, okay, what went wrong? Why didn't DLP trigger with exchange? Why didn't this data that got sent get blocked from sending? And so we really want to have a deep understanding of this, this technology so that we can either remove false positives, right? The policy hit too aggressively or we can increase the uh, accuracy of it by adding other data types in. Maybe, maybe social security numbers are being sent and it's not accurately protecting that technology or protecting that data as it's being transited out of our organization. So let's explore some of this and kind of why it's a big deal. So to do that, let's go ahead and go over to our compliance center and then we'll kind of walk through the different options here. So let's pull that up and we'll walk through this. So all of your data definitions are gonna be in this sensitive info type uh, area here. So here we can see I pulled up social security number, but out of box, we have roughly 264 items that Microsoft is detecting in it. And here you can see this is all the, the fun stuff. So Australian, you know, everything here, Azure, IOT connection strings, publisher settings. So not just maybe PII or traditional stuff, it's also gonna come in and protect the information that's super critical, like those DB auth keys, okay? So for instance, um, here's a good example of why it's really important to understand this. So when we come to US social security numbers, this has a definition associated with it. And so if we pull it up and click on it here, we can see what it means. And Microsoft has, in this case, four different patterns of how they match on a social security number. And so what we can see is there's a primary element and then there's supporting elements. And all of these have different levels of accuracy. So this might be the high accuracy one of Microsoft. So when we were building our DLP before, it might have said, okay, high accuracy match, low accuracy match. And if we look at this, um, you know, we'll, we'll understand this in a second here. So let's, let's do a test here to see what this information hits on. And to help with that, I have some sample data that I'm gonna pull up real quick. All right, so here we can see I have some test PII data in my file share. And in this case, I have 
30 rows of social security numbers here, right? And so let's go test this to make sure that Microsoft is hitting on social security numbers. So to do that, we're gonna hit the upload button and then we're gonna go into this and just upload this data piece here. And we're gonna hit test. So when we run this test, we're just gonna basically pull up and do a data definition check. Is this sensitive info type hitting on our data? So this is a great way to kind of get into it and look at exactly what's going on here. So here you can see um, I have low eight unique matches of US social security numbers. And it's on the low accuracy, a medium accuracy, and a high accuracy. And eight matches is pretty good, right? The definition hit on some of this. However, if you remember, our test, test data set actually had 30 rows of data in it. And so, you know, you might be sitting there and saying, hey, what gives, why is this not working? And this really comes back to the definition of what social security number is for Microsoft. So let's explore that a little bit more here. All right, so I have pulled up here on screen the definition of what a US social security number means in the Microsoft data dictionary. So here we can see we have four separate definitions ranging from high to low, and they just break it out on here very nicely for us. So here we can see for a high accuracy match, it's gonna match on this primary definition of function SSN. And what is a function SSN? Well, we can go to the uh, definitions website and pull that from TechNet. Uh, in this case, for a high accuracy one, a function SSN is a SSN with a pre-2011 strong formatting that are formatted with dashes or spaces. So, you know, a regex essentially that is in this format or this format, that's gonna be considered a high. Now it doesn't stop there, it also, for this high definition, requires a character proximity match of 300 characters from a supporting keyword list, right? And so here we can see it's matching at least one from this keyword list here, keyword SSN. Uh, these are the keywords that are in this document here. And this is why we're only hitting on eight of the different data definitions that we have. Right, and so on and so forth. Each of these different patterns has that same kind of supporting element, same type of uh, SSN regex match, and it changes slightly for each of these definitions, but that can be really confusing, right? We hit on, we have 30 SSNs, and we're, we're positive of that. However, this entity did not detect that. The sensitive information type did not detect that, and we might potentially be missing out on some of that detection. Now, the reason why Microsoft programs this in is that this can be a, uh, a large number of false positives if we're just looking at this regex match with no supporting keywords. So these supporting elements are really nice for eliminating false positives, but you have to kind of decide where you want to be at on a kind of sliding scale of overprotected or over um, overly sensitive when it comes to this data in transit of your organization. So uh, there's not really a one size fits all. So it's important to understand kind of how this fits. And the next step is, well, what if we do about it if we don't like it? So uh, let's take a look at this kind of kind of our options here. So back in the compliance center, we can pull up this items. And if we don't like the definition that this has out of box, we can go in and copy and duplicate it and then modify it, right? So I've done that here. And let's kind of walk through what we can do to adjust this uh, policy and help us or make it hit on some more of the uh, things that we, we feel is more important for us. So let's go ahead and edit this. And we're gonna say, uh, change the name from copy to no accuracy, or let's do no keyword in this case. And so here we again, we have all four of those individual patterns broken out with each of their definition. Um, this website that I'll put in the show notes is kind of the breakout of what each of those definitions is and exactly kind of what it does in the XML and how you can, you know, see the keyword list. And I'll, I'll link this for you so it's uh, easier to find, but it has all of the different definitions here from Microsoft. So 
you know, whatever you're looking for, it'll have essentially the breakout of each of them, what each of them means. So if you were like, hey, I want to know what Canada driver's license is, well, it's going to be kind of this option here. Okay. So let's go back and let's modify this now to uh, have it hit on more data. Maybe we want to, maybe we're going to do exact data match so it doesn't, we don't need the keyword later, or maybe we just extra sensitive about this data type and we don't want to have the option for it to be sent out. So let's go and modify this. So in this case, a um, couple of options that we have, right? We're looking at 300 characters and having the keyword within that range of it. So right off the bat, a couple of things we can do is we can increase this, you know, proximity to say, hey, within 500 characters, that's what we want to hit on, right? So if we detect a social security number within 500 characters, well, that that's maybe better. Or we can actually target this and say, if we see the keyword SSN anywhere in the document, uh, and whether that be email in the subject line or you know further down in the document, if we see one of those keywords, then it's a match, we can do that as well. So I'll go ahead and update this one on the high accuracy. And then on a low accuracy, we can go in and actually just remove that keyword list entirely, right? So we can come into this and adjust this one and just, if we don't like the keyword option, we can delete it. So let's do that on some of this uh, lower accuracy ones. Okay. So there we have set. So, um, and the medium, let's, let's make that adjustment on that one too, right? So we did all anywhere in the document previously. So in this one, let's go ahead and uh, let's put 500 characters in this one. And then we'll see kind of how it interacts when we do our test. All right, so in high, we're saying anywhere in the document, we're looking for that keyword on a medium, 500 characters, proximity, and then on the uh, low accuracy, we're not using keywords anymore, right? We're gonna hit on a lot of different stuff here, okay? So let's go ahead and save that, and then we'll do our test again. And then we'll see kind of exactly where we're at from a, uh, a test standpoint. All right, so our definition is saved and let's go ahead and pull this up and we'll run the test again. So same data set, 30 rows, and let's open it up and we'll hit test. And there we go. So for our first definition, now that we have that keyword in here, we're hitting on SSN and it's showing all 30 pieces of data set. Similarly for the medium accuracy, um, you know, again, 30 hits on it and so on and so forth, low accuracy, we're hitting on that. So that's great here, but what about again, the definition that we have from the other one of, um, what if there's no keyword, right? We wanna, we wanna understand that no keyword. So uh, I have another test data set where we're not presenting any keywords. And so let's see how it interacts if we do that, right? So in this case, I have just names and social security numbers, and let's test that. And in that case, no data found. So still some work to do on this data definition if we wanna hit it, right? So this goes back to the different formatting capabilities that we have in this kind of this data definition that I pulled up even before. Um, so because all of the definitions in this are looking at kind of different formatting options of how the social security number is adjusted, we did a strong one where it's formatted this way and that's what hit on it. So it's hitting on that one, but there was no keywords in this primary definition, but the unformatted or randomized formatted ones it didn't hit on these because, well, uh, we we didn't. Uh, it's not matching that pattern for it, and uh, that's kind of what's going on with that one. So, uh, if we wanted to go in and adjust this again, what we can do is we can go back into this high priority one and remove the the data definition of requiring a social security number keyword. Uh, and so that's kind of how we can modify these, adjust them as appropriate for our organization. And again, it's really about deciding where you want to be on the sliding scale of uh, false positives, hitting on making maybe a lot of noise for your end users, or 
more protective of the data. Uh, and so we can adjust this as you go through your monitor mode. Keep that in mind of, hey, these data definitions really do play into effect of what we're hitting on and where we're going there. So hopefully that's a helpful overview of sensitive information types. If you have questions, uh, please reach out. Happy to uh, cover it in more depth if that's helpful. Uh, and have a great day, everyone.